So I think without further ado, I'll let you explain to, um, to the audience. We have about 170 people here. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you, can, you can tell your story of uh, a fascinating story about, about what you've been doing um, since, the, since the troubles began. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to start my uh, presentation saying how thankful we are for the support of uh, the United Kingdom and the people of the United Kingdom to Ukraine and Ukrainian people. And it's an uh, honor for me to present our case of lean thinking during uh, a crisis to this audience uh, because of everything that your country and you are doing to support us. Um, actually, my presentation will start with the uh, words of how happy we were before the war. Our country is the second biggest in Europe. Uh, we have had 43 million uh, population in our country. We were happy to present our lean cases in Ukraine. And many, many people visited us uh, just to see how we are progressing in our lean journey. Photos of Happy John Shook, Peter Willis, and Chevdetos Dagan. We were really uh, happy with the results. We had lean forums where biggest lean coaches presented, and everything was fine in our country uh, before the. February 24th of 2022, when uh, the Russian invasion happened, more than 800,000 of Ukrainians lost their homes during seven months of war. Almost 7 million of Ukrainians had to relocate to safer regions of Ukraine. Hundreds of factories have been destroyed. And uh, you can see right now uh, the factory of our client. This factory was destroyed, destroyed during our Zoom call with them. Uh, we were trying to help them to relocate to safer place. Thankfully, nobody was uh, hurt. But factory was totally uh, destroyed. 57 of Ukrainian companies have ceased uh, operations. Uh, export have decreased by 50% from February to March uh, 2022. Blockades have totally halted shipping. As of May, 5.5 million people have left Ukraine as refugees while 6.4 million have relocated inside uh, the country. We had two biggest problems, uh, as it was reported by the leaders of our clients to us. First problem is leadership struggling to adjust to new reality. And the second one, loss of experienced people and the need for the rapid development of capabilities. Uh, we really believe that uh, Lean could help us uh, with these problems. We had very good examples of uh, real leadership by our president, uh, Zelensky, who refused to leave uh, the country. Um, as it was advised by foreign leaders, he was with his people. And for us and for our leaders of our uh, companies, it was important to follow those uh, steps and to be a true leaders uh, in this terrible crisis environment. What were the key problems that our leaders faced? No experience in dealing with such extreme situations. It was the one of a kind type of problems and now we know that we need to be prepared for everything and all our activities should be dedicated for this preparation. Too many life or death tasks at the same time, it was like a burden for our leaders and they were dealing with such type of tasks each day. Managers were afraid to do anything because they believed it can make the situation even worse. You can imagine in what circumstances uh, we were working. It was a real 
problem to ask people to come to work and to do their job when they were mostly in uh, bombing shelters and you needed to show your strengths and your belief in our victory and to do your job to uh, do pipes uh, do furniture to make all the shipments to your clients because the life should continue and you need to uh, support your country and your people with the salaries, with the money and everything. But it was uh, like very emotional portion of the leader's activity in this circumstances to ask people to come to work. Uh, you can see our one of our office um, uh, Lean Institute Ukraine supported to build uh, units in Kiev and in Kharkiv, and uh, one of them was unfortunately uh, partially destroyed. And uh, you also can imagine how to work in such uh, offices or uh, how to find uh, answers for your people, what will be next. But uh, it was manageable. Um, we had some findings that I want to share with you. Like companies are finding it more effective to work in small groups within the organization rather than trying to survive as a big enterprise. Uh, it was a really crucial finding for us that by splitting in smaller independent groups, we managed to be more successful uh, in businesses because different areas of Ukraine, they had a totally different situation. Some were really endangered, like capitals, like some eastern uh, regions of Ukraine. But, but in some areas, it was a totally safe environment and you managed could manage to continue your activities. And those groups in different areas, they had to be independent with different tasks. It really helped our army. And it was a real sign for us that we can do the same. You may know from the news that our army was split in small subdivisions, small groups that were attacking Russian army, uh, coming from nowhere, attacking and coming back, but uh, at the same time, Russian army that was vertically integrated was always waiting for some orders from the generals so from the top, while our independent small groups were successfully attacking and we winning the battles. The same, um, the same way we were working as uh, companies, as enterprises. And uh, now it's a really important key finding out of this situation. Also, to support people, we need to give them small goals, small targets, small tasks. What do I mean by saying that? That um, when you have a war, when you he have this nightmare that you can't even think about the huge implication of this uh, situation, it's in impossible to have a greater goals, how to achieve some new markets, how to change the strategy. Um, that's why it is important to split your main goals, main targets for the company in smaller goals uh, for the people to be more achievable. You mm, just need to say that, for example, leave your uh, factory right now because it's endangered, like Russians are coming. You are not giving them tasks like you need to move for Europe or you need to uh, move your enterprise and your factory somewhere western in western part of Ukraine because it's too much and in such situations some people would think like I stay here, I would not do anything because it's too much for me to think. Procrastination is just covering everything. But if you have this small task, it's, it really helps. And we uh, saw the results of such uh, small goals divisions uh, for civilians when we try to convince our relatives or just workers, just leave the endangered territories. And then after that, we gave them um, better tasks for our company just find 
new customer in this region, you know, find money to pay the salaries. And it was much, much easier for people to have these smaller goals rather than to have bigger picture visions. Also, um, interesting finding was that COVID-19 prepared us for the war somehow uh, by uh, teaching us to work remotely, teaching us to use Zoom calls that it was not so uh, widely used in Ukraine. But thanks to this uh, COVID-19 experience, um, almost immediately after the war started, our groups, for example, in Lean Institute or our clients, managed to contact, managed to do online uh, even trainings in TPM because it was needed, TWI, and some consulting, it was done easily. Before the COVID-19, probably it would be much, much harder to convince people even to communicate in a such way. Also, workers look back at how leaders behaved in uh, 2020 during the pandemic. Uh, what do I mean by this? That uh, uh, if you behaved not so properly, badly, uh, fairly saying, with your people during the pandemic, uh, then there will be no loyalty for your company uh, from these people during the war. But if you were good leader during this first crisis, huge first crisis, then you manage to have loyal workers that would come uh, working for free for some period of uh, periods of time who will be rebuilding your destroyed factory and we have this exact um, cases uh, right now with our clients and this is really important to remember that uh, people have memory and their loyalty is built on your previous actions. Um, unfortunately, some of uh, leaders, uh, they, they were so afraid that, for example, we had bad cases, like for a couple of months, they were not just picking the phones uh, because they were so afraid. And believe me, it will be remembered and it's not a good behavior for the leaders. They should remember this. It's not like the one time event. Uh, it will, everything will be continued and you need to behave properly. Uh, the second biggest problem was losing experienced people. And uh, it was a huge problem. Some of them went to army, like you can see uh, Ivan Shemeta, our colleague, lean manager of one of our clients, company St. Travis. Uh, he went to army to protect the country. And you can imagine, like 20% of workers have joined the army. 30% of workers have uh, left the country, women with children, and it's a workforce. You need to continue your activities, you need to uh, continue your sh shipments uh, and provide uh, provision of the services, but it's like almost in impossible to do it because of the war and uh, all described problems. But training within industry that was developed during the uh, World War II uh, helped us a lot, a lot. It was a key instrument in this situation. We were thankful that we managed to have skill matrix at our factories of our clients. We knew uh, what professions, what knowledge was endangered and we managed to create some job descriptions and to make new trainings for new people uh, in our um, companies. And it was a huge success. Uh, why I'm saying so? Because um, other than just people, people leaving, you have so many existing problems like bombings, lack of electricity. And you can see at my slide that the biggest uh, reason for stoppages uh, for OEE calculations for the equipment uh, in um, our clients' factories is sirens. Um, you just can't work, but you need to continue your activities. And in this environment, due to 
TWI trainings, you can help uh, your company, you can keep some knowledge in your company and uh, make everything going even in this uh, critical situation as I see. Uh, what were key findings out of this problem? That skill matrix is a super effective uh, for any circumstances, I think, and it should be maintained properly in every company. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a risk that companies will lose critical knowledge um, due to such environment and some groups of workers are in bigger danger like maintenance people. Uh, usually they are uh, formed uh, by men and smaller team and when they leave for army for example um, some key knowledge, key skills, uh, they can be just left untreated and through uh, TWI we can manage to um, make it safer for company to have everything in your company for the few future new workers. People are afraid of being useless and now they are happy to do the work that they did not want to do before, like TPM. It was also crucial uh, for us to uh, understand that uh, people are willing to do the job that they were not willing to do before the war. Uh, we had some problems of implementing TPM, total productive maintenance, for example, because operators were saying it's not our job, we don't want to do this. Uh, but now they want to be useful, they want to help the company, they want to help the country and our projects in TPM and actually all other projects, they are moving faster uh, than uh, before the war. And it was a really important and unexpected finding. Um, actually, that's it for my presentation. I wanted to sound optimistic in my presentation. I, I don't want to sound like uh, asking for some support or just pitying us. We are resilient and for me it's important that our companies are resilient and we are working hard to win and the victory is close, uh, it's like nearby with your help and with our strengths and beliefs in uh, our instruments that we had and uh, for sure everything will be fine for Ukraine, for the world and uh, my last words will be um, thank you once, once again. Um, this, also, this war also taught us how important it is to have the international connections, to have the support and if we manage to maintain it in the future, everything will be fine for our country. Thank you very much once again for the invitation and for the honor to present. Thank you very much. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.